Hi and welcome to a thrift flip. Today I'm gonna thrift flip this skirt. I found it at the flea market for three euros and it was a little bit big but it's I mean it's not the big deal. I could have taken insides and just called it a day but I don't use skirts that much and I, I had a vision. I had a dream so I proceeded with seam ripping all the seams uh, also part of the waistband and the darts and here you can see kind of what I'm going for uh, I wanted to make like a Y2K inspired halter neck top so I'm using the front of the skirt including the zipper that was already installed and then I am stitching up the waistband side seams. Um, I measured how much I need around my neck and then I stitch across this part um, to make the center back seam in the neck. And before I did this I did do a few stitches uh, alongside the edge where I had seam ripped so that the seams wouldn't unravel the ones that's going uh, horizontal. Then I proceeded with folding the edges inwards from the waistband and ironing them in place. And here you can see me putting in some lining because this is a pretty bad quality polyester fabric and I don't really like having polyester uh, next to my skin. So I wanted to add this cotton lining and I'm just measuring how much I need to stitch up in the center front uh, to be able to reach up to the zipper basically. Then I started to figure out how the darts should be placed and it was a little bit tricky and I had to do a lot of tries. This is of course easier if you have someone that can help you out, help you pin it in place. But eventually I figured it out and I decided that I will cut off the, the top part first and then do the darts. So I'm just putting some facing on the edge and folding it twice. So before I'm top stitching it, I'm just making sure that the lining is flat, I'm removing any extra and then I'm tucking that edge in inside of that double fold, just to be able to finish everything pretty neatly. And then I go ahead and top stitch it in place. When this was done I could fold in and fix the last corner of the neck band I guess and then I did a top stitch on that too. I do this top stitch like a few millimeters from the edge so now we're moving over to the darts again and I'm just marking it out with chalk before I remove the pins and then I do some better markings uh, I use some pattern paper to be able to transfer it to the other side so it will be equal so I'm using a pin and I'm like pricking small holes alongside of both of these uh, lines and then connecting the dots, uh, putting it on the other side, and then I can just pin alongside those marked lines, basically. And in that way, I can 
have symmetrical darts. Then I'm moving over to the side seams because this was a little bit too short to wrap all the way around. I'm cutting strategically placed rectangles from the back side of the skirt to add on to this top and I'm doing it symmetrically and you will see later because I will use this for a bag, the leftover fabric. just ironing on some facing on these. I did it because we're gonna put some grommets in the center back and for that I want some stiffer and um, sturdier base for it so they don't pop out. Uh, so I did this instead of putting lining in because this facing has like a cotton backing uh, so it's more or less the same. Then I'm just overlocking the side seams, folding the edge downwards, and then I'm top stitching that too. Uh, I'm doing the same with the bottom edge. Uh, I do everything in one go, and I'm just folding it up and then tucking the lining inside. You can see me top stitch it in place so the side seams or the back seams i don't know what they are now side back seams <laughs> i overlocked them then i folded them inwards top stitched them so i had like a placket that was like around i think three centimeters wide and then i marked uh, four dots evenly i like to put the topmost and the bottommost grommet first and then I place the other ones with an even spacing in between uh, because when you measure these kind of things it's always kind of confusing so sometimes it helps with just doing it visually so I'm punching a hole and then I'm cutting it with a scissor uh, slowly uh, making it bigger and bigger uh, until it's just enough for the grommet to push through. You don't want it too big because then you risk them falling out later on when you put tension on them. Uh, and I did that for both the back sides. And then I tried lacing it up with this ribbon I just had at home. But when I was happy with it, I went and got some blue ribbon that was matching. And then the top is done, basically. And after this, I moved on to making the bag. So let's move over to the bag. I wanted it to have some kind of body or structure. So I started with cutting out some facing and ironing it on. And also like a little bit of stiffer facing for the bottom part, which is the small thing that sticks out. Uh, and here I'm also doubling it with some stiffer fabric. It's just like a cotton twill uh, or something like that. Then I am basting them together. So I'm stitching alongside the edge and I'm stitching maybe like five millimeters from the edge just to avoid that the seams are showing when the final piece is sewn up. And I've used one centimeter as seam allowance instead. Then I'm taking the strap and just using a lighter to melt the edges so they won't fray. I attach the buckle so it's adjustable. And here you can see me trying to use up the tiny tiny scraps that is left over from the top. Um, I needed... Um, the attachment points basically so i'm cutting these rectangles i'm uh, putting on some facing on them too uh, to make them a little bit stiffer and then i'm stitching them down the middle and then turning them inside out which was a bit of a struggle because they were so stiff even though they were very short but uh, yeah i'm using a safety pin and struggling a lot but eventually i managed to 
and I just ironed them flat uh, and moved on with the rest of the bag. So I decided I wanted a lining inside the bag, so I had some blue fabric left over from other projects and I'm folding the upper hem of this pocket twice and top stitching it and then the rest of the edges I just overlocked, folded inwards and uh, then I will top stitch it all down. Then with the actual bag, I stitched the long sides together and then I'm top stitching it just so the seam allowance will lay flat. Uh, and this is because it's pretty thick by now because it's like a layer of fabric facing and then this thicker black fabric. Then I started pinning the bottom but just uh, because they're not really matching up. The bottom is like a little bit too small than what the outside fabric is, but I didn't want to remove more fabric because I wanted to have it as big as possible. And you can see that two of these corners are kind of uh, flat and then two are a little bit like uh, bulky. And I felt like it was way too uneven, so I seam ripped it and repinned it so I could distribute the um, extra fabric for all four corners instead. And then I'm stitching everything in place. Every time you come to a corner you leave the needle uh, down and then you take the foot up and pivot the fabric and remove like you uh, shimmy the fabric around so it's not in, in the way of what you're stitching. Then I'm using the leftover waistband from the back side of the skirt and I'm just ironing the edges inwards and here is because I wanted it to look you know nice and even and not shift too much I basted it in place uh, before I top stitched it. So now I'm just doing a top stitch a few millimeters from the edge all the way around and after that you can remove the basting stitches. Then I am top stitching on these D-rings so there's an attachment point, uh, one on both sides and try to make it relatively even. Now I'm doing the attachment points on the bag, uh, so I'm taking the small straps I made from before uh, and I am pinning them a little bit uneven here, so you can see one is right at the edge and one a little bit further down and this was to reduce bulk. Um, I also did uh, do a zigzag stitch on the edges before I attached them, um, or no, I did when I attached them. Uh, just to make sure they won't fray. Now moving on to or back to the lining. Uh, I'm stitching up the side seams. Here I've already touched the pockets. I did two of them um, because I want some place to put my keys and my, my phone and whatever so it's easy to find if I have a lot of stuff inside. Uh, and here I actually did have the same amount of fabric as the bottom circumference so I just stitched it in place turn the bag inside out and then like thread the lining on fold the top edge over and iron it down pin it in place uh, to make it ready for top stitching I usually always stitch from the right side because the stitches look better but it is of course harder to know if you're catching the edge on the other side or not and it might be hard if you're just starting out sewing so you can stitch from the inside, that's, that's fine too. Um, I usually just try to make sure when I measure that it's quite accurate and sometimes it doesn't work out but yeah, that's just my method. Then I also realized that I had forgotten to put the bottom in because I wanted a stiff bottom so I did seam rip the lining and put this sheet of plastic in that I stitched in place in the seam allowance. 
So something to know about me is that I really like to use up every little scrap of fabric when I do projects, uh, I try to maximize it and this project is like non-different uh, because I had thrown these tiny triangles into my recycle uh, fabric bin because I was like, they're way too tiny, I can't use them for anything but then I realized I needed something for the drawstring and to try to find something else that matched the same color uh, it seemed a little bit like a hassle so I dug these ones out of the trash basically it's the last piece of fabric I have uh, this with a dragon motif if you think that the other ones were a pain to turn around. This one was really, really painful because it was so thick with all the seams. But eventually, after a lot of struggle, I managed. And then you can see me threading the drawstring through with a crochet hook. And doing a stitch in between and try not to catch the, the string. Then I tried to burn the edges, but uh, instead of melting, they, they burned. Uh, so I think the core of this string is probably cotton. So I left that be for, for the time being, and then I started with the grommets instead. So I think I measured around two and a half centimeters from the strap attachment point and placed the first grommet and then uh, from the center of the grommet I measured three centimeters for each new grommet and I put three on each side of the attachment point. This bag is inspired by like kimono drawstring bags so yeah this is something that I could use for a street style and for my kimono when I wear them. And I'm doing the same thing as I did with the, with the top just punch a hole and then cut it up with a scissor and do it little by little so that the fit is very tight uh, otherwise yeah they can pop out later this one turned out to be very thick because it's so many layers of fabric so it just took a little bit longer to cut up the hole because i had to cut from both sides and stuff like that Then you press in the, the front of the grommet, put on the backing, and then I'm using this tool for pressing them. And if you only use the hammer so far and you're doing a decent amount of grommets, I would highly recommend buying this. It's like a, under 10 euros. So this tool makes it be really even with the pressure and makes the grommets look a lot nicer. Then I went ahead and glued the ends instead and let them dry and when they were dried I just cut off the extra and I'm using this E6000 glue. And this is what the skirt looked like before and after. you enjoy this video leave a comment and yeah give it a like and i'll see you in the next one bye